Welcome back to Lighting Design 101 with your instructor, Denise Remping. I am Denise Remping, come to bring you another lesson about basic lighting fundamentals and theory. This video is going to be about non-lighting lighting tools, features you can use as a lighting designer that are not lighting instruments, but can help enhance your lighting design. For this video, I'm going to focus on the cyclorama, drapes, the scrim, and fog. All features you can use and implement into your lighting design that are not specifically lighting instruments. Before I begin, however, I will state that all of these features may not be available at every theater. And before you go ahead and include them, you should consult with your director and the rest of your design team, as they may have a significant impact on the show, especially in terms of what your running crew will need to do and other elements of design, such as scenery or costumes. I spoke of the cyclorama in the first video and touched just a bit on what it can do. The main advantage of a psych is its reflective nature. When a light hits a psych, it illuminates the fabric and makes your stage brighter. Most psychs are white in color, so its presence, even when not lit, already reflects light, giving your stage a brighter look, and its sheer size and stretched appearance gives you a sense of infinity. In other words, it appears to go on forever into the backstage areas. Psychs are great for shows you want to be brighter by nature, like musicals or comedies. They work really well for outdoor scenes, and I showed you in previous videos how a psych can be used to create scenes like sunsets and sunrises. However, you may have shows or scenes in shows where you don't want a lot of light bouncing all about your stage. In cases like these, the reflective nature of the psych becomes a hindrance and not an advantage. In cases like these, you want something that works in the opposite direction. You want something that actually absorbs light and prevents it from reflecting. This is where drapery comes in. Drapery, or drapes, is just a fancy word for curtains. Curtains are most often used in shows to conceal the parts of the stage you don't want an audience to see. For example, your legs, which are the short vertical curtains that hang on the outer edges of your stage, conceal all activity backstage. They can be used to hide actors before entrances or conceal scenery not currently in use on stage. Borders are short curtains that hang above your stage. A border's purpose is to hide the lighting instruments, the electrics, and the battens in your fly space. The main drape is the curtain that spans the expanse of your stage from proscenium wall to proscenium wall. Main drapes can be flown in and out, which means they rise up and down vertically, or they can be travelers, which means they open horizontally. Some stages may also have mid drapes, which work just like the main drape but are positioned further upstage. Some stages will have more than one. Some may even have a rear drape, which is located at the very back of the stage. Again, these drapes may be flown in and out, or they may be travelers. The purpose of a drape can go beyond just concealing things from an audience. From a lighting designer's perspective, they can be used to absorb light and make a scene darker. When a drape is closed across the stage, it can create a sense of intimacy, drawing focus to what is lit up on stage in front of it. Since all ambient light is then absorbed by the fabric of the drape, an audience's attention will be drawn away from it. Remember in the last video I mentioned how our eyes are designed to notice the brightest thing in the room? The opposite is also true. They are designed to ignore the dimmest thing as well. When there is no light, your eye will not pay attention to the space. When a drape is drawn, your audience will ignore it and focus on the scenery or actors. Take a look at this footage and notice how much the stage opens up when the mid drape is opened. This drape is a traveler, which means it opens horizontally. The psych is lit up and the stage goes from dark and intimate to bright and expansive. Either look has its advantages to a lighting designer depending on the scene. Now, there is a way to achieve a sort of halfway point between the two extremes, and that is where a scrim can come in. A scrim is another type of curtain that is made up of a lightweight woven material. A scrim can have transparent qualities, which means light can pass through it fairly easily. However, when the lighting is not directly on it, such as ambient light, it can appear to be opaque. So if you shine a light directly on a scrim, the scrim will be lit up as well as everything behind it. However, if you shine your light on objects in front of the scrim and not directly on it, and then have no light behind it, 
it will take on the appearance of a solid curtain, which can be useful when creating those darker intimate scenes I mentioned without relying on a heavy solid drape. Then you can switch to a brighter scene and make the scrim appear virtually invisible by simply turning on the right lights. A scrim is not completely transparent and can be used in toning down your light as well. For example, I have often seen shows that place a scrim in front of a psych. With this setup, the psych can be used as it typically is, but when it's not lit up, the scrim provides a buffer that prevents ambient light from bouncing off the psych, toning down the brightness on stage. I use this technique in an opera I designed a year ago. These images are not very clear, but if you take a close look at this nighttime image, you can see that the stars are doubled. This is due to a gobo hitting both the scrim and the psych behind it. During this show, the scrim helped tone down the psych to give the show a more gentle tone, which was great for an opera that takes place in the Great Depression. Now let's move on to fog. I mentioned in a previous video that I would discuss the use of fog a bit more. Fog can be a very useful lighting tool when used correctly. It can also be very versatile, depending on how you light it. Foggers utilize water vapor to create their look, and those water molecules in the air provide some great surfaces for light to bounce off of. You may recall in a previous video when I pointed out the use of a hazer. A hazer is a type of fog machine that provides a constant coverage of haze on your stage. Hazers, as I mentioned, are great for giving edges to your light beams. You'll often see hazers used in concerts, especially if they use lasers. Again, all those water molecules floating around in the air provide surfaces for those lasers to bounce off of and give definition to them. But in theater, a hazer can be great for many reasons, one of which is for shows with a rock concert type feel to them. The very first show I was in that used a hazer was a production of Jesus Christ Superstar, a very rock concert type show filled with 70s style rock music. As I said, fog can be versatile depending on how you light it. Lit from the front, for example, fog can create a solid, almost curtain-like quality. It can, as you can see here, make it difficult to see anything behind it. This technique can be great for concealing moments. An example that comes to my mind is the Wizard of Oz. Fog can be used then, for example, to conceal the Wicked Witch's magical exits. Fog lit from the top takes on a different look. In this footage, we lit the fog with blue overheads. Notice how the light hits the fog compared to how it hit the fog in the previous footage. My favorite part of this look is how the fog creates a shadow on the floor underneath it. If you can manage to get your fog to roll across the floor, which requires a special fogger and the right ventilation system, you can make a rolling mist look, which can be super cool in creepier scenes. And finally, fog lit from behind will glow. Remember the image of the jail cells I showed you in a previous video? I told you to take note of the fog and how it was lit up. This can be super useful if you want to, say, create the illusion of fire on stage. Remember this image? This is not real fire. It's lights and fog. Watch as we recreate that look using a single light and a fog machine. Lighting fog from behind is probably one of my favorite lighting tricks. It looks super cool. And that's a rundown of some non-lighting lighting tools. Again, there are many other tricks of the trade out there and exploring what other designers have done can be a productive use of your time. Every show I go to, whether it be amateur or professional, I pay attention to the lights and see if I can catch some neat ideas I hadn't thought of before. I have in my mind a whole collection of things I want to try someday. I'm just looking for the right shows to use them in.